Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to take a look at Project Salvador. Now, this is a free, or currently free, beta version of an AI-integrated sort of dialog box inside of Fusion. So if you go to the description of this video, there is a link that will take you to the Autodesk App Store, information about this, and you can download it and try it for yourself. What we're going to do today is we're going to talk about what it does and get some sort of samples of how we can use it. Now there are two things that happen when you install it. There is a generate sketch and there is a generate image. Now it's just called Project Salvador, but that's basically what we're doing is we're generating the image. So I'm gonna first take a look at generate sketch because I think that this has a lot of promise. What we need to do is we need to have a canvas image already created. So if you haven't inserted a canvas image, you'll need to do that first. And it's pretty simple, just select insert canvas, we need to pick an image and I'm going to use our lead logo. I'm just going to use this white one here. I'm going to pick a location. I'll scale it up so we can see it a bit better. Need to flip it and say, okay. So now that we have a canvas image, when we go into this generate sketch, we select the image and what it's going to do is it's going to go through and it's going to generate a 2d sketch based off of it and it'll tell it whether or not it was generated successfully if an image has too much detail or the contrast isn't high enough then it could potentially fail but from here what we could do is we could extrude it now i'm going to start by extruding everything and maybe pull it back a little bit then i'm going to bring the sketch back and we'll just hit extrude again and we'll take some of this stuff and we'll extrude it forward. So if you're trying to build, say, a sign off of a logo, or you are trying to just generate a 3D model off of a pretty high contrast, clean image, this actually works really well. And I've used sort of these image to sketch creation things before in other programs like SolidWorks, and they never quite work right. Uh, so I'm, I'm really pleased with how this one works, but that's really just part of what it can do. Now, the other part of what it can do is it can actually generate the image. Now, there's a couple ways that we can go about this. We can start with just a text prompt. We can feed it an image and ask for a variation of it, or we can use the current view of our design. So if you have a design, then you can use that view. I'm gonna use the text version for this video example, because I think that you can probably guess how it works with the other things. So what I'm gonna do is a uh, side view of a concept sport car. Now, full disclosure, I have not typed this in before, so who knows what we're going to get. But essentially what's happening in the back end is this is just an API sort of integration with GPT-4. Obviously not just GPT-4 because there are other elements that generate images like Dolly, but basically what we are getting is a concept image. And I'm going to have to drag this out a bit, see if we can see that image more. Let's see if it gives it to us a bit bigger. It does not. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on enhanced prompt. And basically what happens from here is it will already create the prompt for you, but you can add to this. So side profile, futuristic concept sport car with sleek aerodynamic style. And then we can generate a new image from that. So whenever we use the enhanced prompt, we basically are going to dive down a next level so we can give it more uh, more specific information. Now, when I played around with this earlier, I put in some very detailed or specific information, and I was pretty pleased with the results. So this right here is pretty cool. And what we can do is we can select a plane to put it on, hit OK. And now we've generated a basically a canvas image that we can use to begin our design. Let's go ahead and let's do this again. And this time, let's go ahead and make this smaller again, since we know it's not going to give us a big image. So now what I'm going to do is um, create a future concept of a 1994 Mazda RX-7. So give it a very specific prompt, say we're looking for a new concept of this specific car. So again, it's going to go through, and I have found that it actually generally does a pretty good job. Once again, this is a new prompt I've never typed in before, so we're going to just see it first time together, see what we get. That is obviously an FDRX7. I don't know why it has so many speakers in the back of it, um, or rocket boosters, or whatever the heck those things are. But um, that's obviously an FDRX7 taillight, body style, and it is a concept. So I give it an A-plus for effort there. 
I'm going to go to an enhanced prompt. Again, it's going to automatically generate this. And I, you can see interactive holographic technology and futuristic aerodynamic bodywork. I don't know what holographic technology is, but let's click the button and let's see what happens. So once again, this is essentially like using something like um, OpenAI's Dolly to generate images, but it happens directly inside of Fusion, and then it can paste those images directly on a canvas. So it just kind of cuts out one or two of those steps. One thing I would love to see with this is if you are using it to generate concepts, then actually being able to do a true side view, front view, top view would be really helpful. This, I think, looks pretty awesome. Um, it's obviously a little bit removed from an original FDRX7, but I think the, the details that it puts down here, all the information it gives, and obviously the, the body shape is inspired by that FD. So I'm going to go ahead and toss that on another, um, another canvas. So that way I have it in this file. Maybe pull it over here. And as you can see, we can slowly start to build information out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and edit this canvas, actually. Let's edit that and mirror it, mirror it that way. That way the words are correct, so that won't bother me anymore. But I, I'm, I'm impressed with how much detail it's given. Now, there are, of course, going to be limitations. Like I said, it's not really giving a true side view. But we could continue to do this, create a concept car wheel. Very simple prompt, generate an image. So it's really fun to play around with. Again, currently it, this is free, so you do have access to it. I'm sure at some point it will no longer be a free app, but they are using, to the best of my knowledge, GPT-4, which is not free. You, uh, GPT-3.5 is still free, but 4 isn't. That, again, looks pretty cool. Don't know why it's lit up, but Again, take that and select a plane, and we've got our reference image. It's going to automatically go into edit mode, and we can sort of just start to build out this background of canvases and mood boards and things that we can play around with. So I, if, you, if you're looking at using AI to generate concept images and help you out, I think it's a great tool, especially if you already have a design. And I, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to open up a design and try something. So this is the Porsche 911 that we created in our Porsche 911 series. And I'm going to use this instead of doing text, I'm going to use a current view and have it generate an image variation. So uh, this is obviously a very iconic, recognizable shape. The 80, early 80s Porsche 911, obviously it's got a little bit wider fender flares on it, but it should be very easy for it to recognize this. And what it came back with is basically the exact same thing. Um, this just looks like a 19, late 70s, early 80s Porsche 911. It's got some extra aero things going on, some sort of wide body stuff. We can just continue to generate image variations. We could retake a screenshot if we want and continue to sort of generate new images. So again, if you have a project that you're working on, maybe it's a car model, maybe you're looking at variations of a fender flare or some arrow, you could continue to do this by just, you know, rotating a model you have around, generating some new views, and maybe get some ideas of directions you may want to take your own designs. Uh, at this point, if you want any more information on this, make sure that you do go to the description. There's going to be a link to the information about the app as well as where you can download it. I do think it's at least very fun to play with. It's not the same as a traditional add-in that you would have on the utilities menu. So once you install it, it is going to be here on your toolbar until you uninstall it. So just keep that in mind. But if you have any questions on this, anything that you've seen here, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.